Hello guys and welcome to the 19th episode of Italian Politician of the Week. I am Ipernik, your least favorite political rambler on youtube.com. I have some good news and some bad news. The bad news is that this is the season 2 finale. The reason why I want to take this small gap of time to take a break is because I need some extra time to study, but also because I think that this season has been going great and I want to work on improving myself for a third season. Expect an upgrade for next year's Italian Politician of the Week. For a very long time I have been pondering on and on because I was unsure about which politician I could end the season with. It was a tough choice but I finally made it. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Italian Politician, the man, the legend, Silvio Berlusconi. What is there to say about Silvio motherfucking Berlusconi? I am sure most of you know who this mad lad is, so I will keep this short. Berlusconi is a media tycoon, former prime minister, former owner of AC Milan football team, president of Forza Italia, member of the European Parliament and an absolute chad. In 2009, Forbes listed him as the 12th most powerful man in the world due to his influence and dominance in the Italian political system, and as recently as 2018, he was ranked as the 190th richest man in the world with a net worth of 8 billion dollars. Jesus fucking Christ. Berlusconi was prime minister for 9 years in total, making him the longest serving prime minister in Italy in the Republican times. He is also the world leader that has hosted the most G8 summits. To this day, he has a great personal relation with many world leaders such as Bush Jr. and Vladimir Putin. You might feel overwhelmed by information at the moment, so let's take one step at a time. Berlusconi started off as a very successful entrepreneur in Milan. When he decided to get into politics in 1994, he owned Mediaset, one of the largest media companies in Italy. He was able to rise quickly in popularity thanks to the hedge he had in the field of entertainment, but also because around 1994 and 1996 there was a huge scandal involving most major politicians at the time and led to most uh, parties losing credibility and it was uh, during that time that uh, parties like Democrazia Cristiana, Alleanza Nazionale, Partito Socialista, Partito Comunista all dissolved in shame and Forza Italia under the new man Silvio Berlusconi filled the power vacuum with extreme ease. Berlusconi was prime minister from 1994 to 1995, then again from 2001 to 2006 and finally from 2008 to 2011. Berlusconi was the first minister in Italian history to assume the premiership without having held any prior government or administrative offices. He is known for his populist political style and brash personality. Berlusconi still remains a controversial figure who divides public opinion both in Italy and abroad, though he was not a populist for his ideology, just for his approach to it. I am sure you are at the edge of your seat right now. To find out where Berlusconi is in the political compass. Due to his very liberal views on the economy and somewhat socially conservative views, he stays at the bottom of authoritarian right quadrant, while he is very much against high taxation and state intervention to the free market, he is not opposed to some state intervention when it comes to services for their citizens, particularly old age pensions and aid to businesses and the unemployed. He is also quite patriotic and generally old school when it comes to social matters, we'll get into that in a bit. Supporters of Berlusconi like to emphasize his leadership skills and charisma, which makes him very hard to hate. Plus his fiscal policy based on tax reduction and his ability to maintain strong and close foreign relations with both the United States and Russia has increased Italy's influence in the world stage to levels that had never been seen before this century. On the other hand, critics address the ethics 
critics of his government practices in relation to his business holdings. He has always been accused of having mismanaged the state budget and increasing the Italian government debt in doing so. The second criticism concerns uh, the pursuit of his personal interests while in office. He would often pass laws that benefited his own company's growth. To be fair, also other companies took advantage of these laws to enrich themselves, uh, leading also to an increase of the GDP, but this also led to an increase in economic inequality. The economy was not the only thing leading to inequality. Since Berlusconi owned a good portion of the media in the country, he could essentially show Italians whatever you wanted. Therefore, there is a lot of uh, Forza Italia propaganda and advertisements uh, in favor of the party in uh, most media set channels at the time. There is even a jingle. Another thing that is very interesting is Berlusconi's turbulent social life, especially sex life. In fact, one of the reasons why people, men especially, liked him so much was because he was very open about his passion for girls. He was so open, in fact, that most of the shows in Mediaset had a team made out of hot young dancers. He brought this passion along with him in politics as well. In fact, Berlusconi's fourth government is fondly remembered for having many very attractive women in its ranks. Berlusconi would often host parties where young actresses and models would be invited, supposedly for orgies of sorts. These supposed parties, along for his frivolous business practices, put him in a lot of trouble with the law. In 2013 he was found guilty of tax evasion by the Court of Cassation, leading to his ban from public office for six years. In 2018, Nine, this ban was lifted and is currently in the European Parliament. Due to his old age, he was also sent to one year of community service, which he did. So I guess he is even with the law in theory, but many still think that uh, the judges went too easy on him. I do not exactly agree with this statement since he is very old, but at least he was banned from any kind of public offices for long enough to lose most of his support. Today, Forza Italia has only 6% of the votes in polls, so good luck getting re-elected with that. Love him or hate him, but Berlusconi is going to leave an incredible legacy in Italy. He is unforgettable. I want to end this episode by showcasing some of his most famous jokes and blunders. In September 2003, addressing traders at the New York Stock Exchange, Berlusconi listed a series of reasons for why they should invest in Italy. The first of which was that we have the most beautiful secretaries in the world. This remark resulted into a protest by female members of parliament who took part in a one-day cross-party protest. Berlusconi's list also included the claim that Italy had the fewest communists back in the day and those who are still around since then deny having been one at the time, which is pretty fucking funny. In 2005 he made some unpleasant remarks about Finland and its food, rightfully so, particularly on smoked reindeer, which sounds disgusting. Disgusting. In response to that, Coti Pizza, a Finnish pizza chain, made the pizza Berlusconi in his honor, using reindeer as topping. In March 2006, Berlusconi alleged that Chinese communists under Mao Zedong had boiled children and used them to fertilize the fields. <laughs> Okay. Briefly before the 2008 Italian general elections, Berlusconi was accused of sexism for saying that female politicians from the right were more beautiful and that the left had no taste even when it comes to women. On the 6th of November 2008, two days after Barack Obama was elected the first black US president, Berlusconi referred to Obama as young, handsome and even tanned. On November 1st, 2008, 
2010, after once again being accused of involvement in juvenile prostitution, he suggested to an audience at the Milan trade fair to stop reading newspapers. I quote, Don't read newspapers anymore because they deceive you. I am a man who works hard all day long, and if sometimes I look at some good looking girl, it's better to be fond of pretty girls than to be gay. The remarks were immediately condemned by Archie Gay, Italy's main gay rights organization. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, sure, I'm a fucking pedophile, but at least I'm not gay. Okay, um, granted, I have included only the ones that I found funny, but there are quite a lot that, that are downright offensive and despicable to say the least. This is just the tip of the barrel. Berlusconi is a big pile of shit with a laughing track in the background, and the laughing track is directed at us. A merely short YouTube video cannot describe the things he was accused of, even though I think his political views are very appealing, he has also brought a lot of shame onto Italy and the economic well-being that the country experienced turned out being merely an illusion he created to distract us from the fact he was essentially screwing us from behind. On a bright note, Berlusconi's era is long gone and honestly I doubt that things can get any worse than they were 10 years ago. Even during a global pandemic we still look great in the world stage. I don't know internally, but at least outside people don't think we're fucking losers. Thank you guys so much for watching. Words cannot describe how happy I am to be here. Stay tuned for more videos after the holidays. This has been Ipernick the Great and I will see you next year.